what's good youtube in this video you guys are going to see me go over a trade that i took in es the other day i'm going to go over the entire trade why i took it where i took profits at the logic behind the trade everything so i hope you guys enjoy this video without any further ado let's get into the charts all right so we got the s p 500 here we got the blue candle which is where i went long let me zoom in i went long inside this candle and I took profits inside this candle right here. So let's go into why I took this trade. So you can see I have this blue shaded yellow pink. This is London open 2 to 5 a.m. New York open 7 to 9 a.m. And this is the a.m. session, which is from 9.30 to 11.30 for me. So you can see during New York open, we consolidated. And then right before 9.30, we ran up. We took out this high right here. Make that blue. We took out that high and then we ran down and we failed to take out this low right here. This low made at 630. Sometimes for the New York Open, it's generally from 7 to 9 a.m. But there are times when you can extend it to 6 a.m. So this low at 630 is an important low and we failed to run this low out. However, if I go to NASDAQ, that same 630 low, we ran out. Let me take this off real quick. So on NASDAQ, we ran that 630 low out. And then you can see that we made a low, made a high, and then made a lower low. So these down close candles right here is a bearish breaker. So if price was going to continue lower, it should have went into the bearish breaker and then went lower to continue lower. And you can see that we had a fair value gap here. So when price runs through the fair value gap and through this breaker, this is confirming to me that this was just a run on stops and we're probably going to go higher to clear up these highs right here. So you can see that we run this out on NASDAQ. If I drop down to a 30 second chart, we take out this high right here. This high is important because it's between a fair value gap. So this low and this high right here, that's a fair value gap. And any swing high that goes to a fair value gap and at least 50% within it is an intermediate high. So when we take that out, that's a shift in market structure. So now we have a shift in market structure. We traded through the bearish breaker and we have a run on stops while ES didn't run its stops. That is a sign that we may go higher. So let's go back to ES. So now I'm back on ES. Like I was saying, we failed to run this low and then we started to trade higher. We take out this high right here, just like we did on NASDAQ. And remember, it's an intermediate high because we're in between this fair value gap and we go to at least 50%. So we take that high out. So now we have our shift in market structure after our S&T divergence. So then if we measure from this low to this high, change it to OTE, we have equilibrium right here. So I'm going to map that out. And then we have optimal trade entry here. So I'm going to map that out. So boom. We have our equilibrium and we have our optimal trade entry mapped out. Now I like to go down to a lower time frame, like a 30 second or a 15 second chart and refine my entry. So I'm gonna do that now. If we go to the 30 second chart, you can see that equilibrium is right here and we have a fair value gap. So I want it to go long inside of that gap. Here's one second. The reason why it appears that I entered before equilibrium is because if you look to the top left, I'm on the micro chart. The micro chart is not going to be as precise as the regular chart. So if we go to the regular chart and we measure from this low to this high, and I'm picking this low because this low runs it out, but the bodies never trade below it. So I'm going to pick this low right here. And then if we measure from that low to this high, we have equilibrium here, and then we have optimal trade entry here. So now looking at the regular chart, you can see that equilibrium is right here. I forgot to label that let me label that real quick so we have equilibrium right here and we have this fair value gap and if you look to the left of the chart we have this volume imbalance so boom volume imbalance so we have a failed volume imbalance lined up with a fair value gap that's a balanced price range and because we have a balanced price range right at equilibrium i'm going to want to enter right at equilibrium just in case that it doesn't run to optimal trade entry you'll see that there are times or the times when price only goes to equilibrium and not to the 61 to 79 percent level is because there's some type of balanced price range at equilibrium that's going to send price higher if you're bullish or bearish or down if you're bearish so i know it looks like they're not lined up 
but if you look at the open of this candle it is 49.93.5 and equilibrium is at 49.93.5 so i know the lines look like they're not touching but it's the same level because i'm on such a smaller time frame it looks like they're separate but they are the same so i wanted to enter as soon as we hit that 93.50 level which is this candle at 9.49, 30 seconds. So if we go back to the micro chart, you can see why my entry was on this candle here at 9.49, 30 seconds. So that was my entry, boom. We go back to optimal trade entry. We trade back higher. We go back into this bearish order block right here. So you can pyramid right here if you want to. I decided not to pyramid. I just wanted to get one entry and see what it does. I was entering before 10 o'clock on a day where there's no news. And because of that, I wanted to see how was price going to trade. And we're going to get into that. So we have our entry at equilibrium. It trades down to optimal trade entry. We go above the bearish order block. We come back into it. We tap it one time. We tap it two times, tap it three times, and then we go higher. So what can you do with this information well for one once you have your entry you can look for a smaller market maker buy model so think of this like a curve right here so i was trading boom trying to trade the bigger curve right you can do the same thing with this curve so from this high to this low trying to get back above that's a bigger curve but you have from this high to this low trying to get back above so if you want a pyramid you can pyramid matching up the left side of this curve so what are you looking for you're looking for up close candles or reclaimed order blocks on the left side of the curve to match up with an imbalance on the right side of the curve so if we look we go down and then we start to trade higher in this run down where are the up close candles well, you have one right here. Do you see it? You have the up close candle. We trade above it. We come down. We have an imbalance right here. So you can enter there for your pyramid. We have an order block here. So because you have an order block and there's no imbalance next to it, you want to drop down to a smaller time frame to see if there are any imbalances within these two order blocks. So we're going to drop down to a 15 second chart. And you can see that there's a little bit of this imbalance left. So we have this low here. But we have a little bit of the imbalance left it comes back into it closes it perfectly let me draw a line on that make it black closes it perfectly taps it starts to go higher so that is how you can pyramid certain entries i didn't pyramid on this one like i said i wanted to just get one entry and see what it does and the reason why i wanted to do that was one the timing it wasn't 10 o'clock yet and you're going to notice that some of your best setups are going to form during 10 o'clock there's no news, but it is offering my model. So I want to take my entry, but I only want one entry. And on top of that, this is a high resistance liquidity run. What do I mean by that? Notice that we already took buy side here, then went lower, then going higher to take buy side a second time. That is a high resistance liquidity run. Now, let's say that this run ran up, but failed to take this high out. And then we had to drop the SMT the comeback to a discount fair value gap then i'm looking the pyramid no matter what time it is whether it's 9 50 or 10 o'clock i'm looking the pyramid because now that's a low resistance liquidity run because we never took buy side but because we took buy side it's a high resistance liquidity run and you can see how it chopped its way up and then finally expand it to go higher and then you can see what happened after that but let's say that this didn't take out this high it should have just shot right through it with very little resistance. But because it was a high resistance liquidity run, we had a lot of chop and then it finally went higher. And then lastly, let's talk about my target. I simply just had a two to one target. So if my entry was at 93.50, nor this equilibrium sign, because remember we're going off of the bigger chart or the real chart, not the micro chart. And I simply just wanted a two for one which is right there. And let me make sure it's lined up right there. So I basically wanted a one to two risk to reward ratio. So I entered at 93.50. My stop loss is at 87.75. And then my target was at 5,005. And then you can see in this candle right here, we hit it. 
and then I get filled with my profit. And that was for a total of see how many, 46 ticks. So in this trade, it was 46 ticks. If you account for spread, then it's 44 ticks. What is spread? Basically, whatever you enter at, the broker is going to recognize your entry at one tick above in the ES market. And your stop loss has to go one tick below wherever your stop loss is to account for the spread. So like if it went down and tapped your stop loss, or not my bad, if it went down and came one tick short of your stop loss and you had your stop loss right at the low, then it will still potentially fill you and stop you out. So you want to make sure that you account for the spread and you can always see spread right here in the top left corner. So you see 0.25, that's one tick. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this trade. This is the model that I love to trade. I'm basically looking for S&T divergence with a shift in market structure, return back to a discount or premium fair value gap, depending on whether I'm bearish or bullish. And that's pretty much it. But yeah, I hope you guys like this review. I'll be doing more content like this for you guys in the future and continue to support the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.